Hey there everyone, Atayish here, back again with another video and if you're watching this video, you don't need to go through into the documentation of Flatless because we are going to study that in this video. A big shout out to Hashnode for sponsoring the entire series and now let's get back to handling how we can actually use and have an example of the Flatlist. Now Flatlist example, we saw that we actually got an example on Rix as well, which is pretty nice and this is actually, this is it, this piece of code, that is all that you need to work on with Flatlist. Simple and absolute easy. The example here is very, very basic. We are going to go through with a tiny bit more complex so that you can see the real world scenario of it. Uh, so let's go back and uh, where is my VS Code? Here it is. All right, uh, we can actually minimize this. I just started my app so that I can see what is happening because now we will be checking that how the things are shaping up. All right, uh, let's minimize this. We don't need it much. We can close this as well. All right, first safe area view. Let's keep it. Let's just keep it. Status bar, we don't need to worry too much on that part. We can just go ahead and work like that. All right. Now, the first portion of this app is pretty easy. As we saw in the very first video, just some input that we'll be taking from the user. After that, we will be showing that whether the result data is there or not. So based on that, super easy. Let's first uh, nail it down and then we're going to work with that. So, all right, I'm going to remove all of this. I'll be just handling a simple view. So let's go ahead and have a view just like this. This view obviously will have a style. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this because we'll be having a lot of styles. Styles, we have already kept it here. So containers and everything. Maybe you want to give a different look. That would be a great thing. And you can share it us with on our Discord or Twitter or wherever you like. Uh, that would be a great, great exercise that, hey, I have modified the look of this uh, app that we have created. That's a very first great start. All right, so style is going to be styles.container. So that's the style which will be wrapping around everything. So we'll just copy this from here. All right, so in this view, uh, we'll be having a top container and there will be another container as well. So let's go ahead and have a view just like this. And here we'll be having this container. So we'll have another one which is top container. All right. Now inside this top container, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we'll be having a view which will be uh, depicting some text, nothing much. So let's go ahead and have this view. We're just organizing the things, nothing much that we are doing. Okay, we will have this rupee container. That's it. Inside this, there will be just a text. All right. This text obviously will have style. So we'll call this one as simply rupee. There we go. My currency of my country. And I will have actually a symbol of this, which I've actually copied and I'll paste it. So this is a symbol of rupee in case you don't know, you're watching from outside of India. That's the currency. <laughs> All right. Uh, once we have this, then we have the text input here as well. So let's go ahead and have the text input. There we go. It looks like we don't have an import statement for that. So that was just added for us. Let's check this. And yeah, text input. We'll, at the end of the disk, we'll, we'll be clearing up all the unnecessary imports as well. All right, so what do we want in this text input? Really, uh, first of all, we want to provide a max length that I don't want to take any more than value of 14. That's too much of conversion for us. And then we'll be having a value. This is the value which is going to be linked to our state. So super simple. Close like this and then say, hey, this will be governed by the input value, which is our state. No big deal. Now, uh, we'll be having one more thing here, which is clear button mode. What this does is actually whenever uh, you have entered the value, this will automatically clean the stuff. So you don't have to write extra code to clean this up. So we're going to go ahead and say always. There are more options in here. You can go ahead and read about them, but I'll just say this one. And one more thing you need to worry about is this is only for iOS. Windows, we have to wait a little bit. Uh, sorry for Android ones. All right. Uh, then we'll be working on on change text. So what should happen on a change text? On change of the text, we want to add this value to our state. So in that case, we're going to go ahead and put this into set input value. That's it. As soon as something changed, the state will get updated. That's exactly what we want. Uh, keyboard type. We obviously want a number pad. So suggestion, yep, number pad. This is what we want. And we want to have a placeholder as well. Feel free to enter anything that you like. We'll be saying enter amount in rupees. There we go. So our text input is ready. We should save this and let's see. And uh, it's refreshing a little bit. Uh, we can go ahead and open up this one as well. Let's hit a refresh and probably a shift R. 
Uh, it's not loading yet. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Probably that's a little bit outside. No worries on that part. We'll come back onto this a tiny bit later. All right. So this one is looking good. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is our result. So inside the same, uh, let's go outside of this view and let's use uh, the JavaScript here. And we'll be saying, hey, if we have a result value, then only we want to display this. So we'll use an ampersand for the true statement. And then we'll use these parentheses. Anything outside of the parentheses, then we have to use the return statement or something. Everything in the parentheses is considered as just one component. So it will render this entirely. So I'll just hit enter here. And there we'll be just having this text block. We obviously have some stylings here. So I'll just copy this part. Oops, my bad. Copy this and we'll paste it up here. Have a little bit space and we'll be calling this one as result text. There we go. And inside this result text, we will be just placing the result value. There we go. So it's, this will be conditionally rendered that we have. All right. So now we'll go outside of this view and we'll start another view here as well, which is a bottom container. Just like we have a top container, we will have a bottom container. We'll have a view just like this. And there we go. Now, in case you noticed up here, we have this bottom container. Now, in this bottom container, the meat part comes up, which is the flat list that we'll be uh, placing up here. So notice this very carefully how I actually create a flat list. This will be your very first time you are seeing it. So pay small attention here. Okay, flat list is being imported and will be uh, you can self close this or you can just go like that. But everything goes inside as a prop. So it's better to actually close it like this. Now this will give you a problem because flat list cannot be used directly like this. It needs to have some item which it wants to repeat through it. So there is some item. It can be a card. It can be just a tile, whatever you want. So it is there. First of all, we'll be defining that num columns. What it does, it it actually multiple columns can only be rendered with horizontal false. So we don't want to have uh, all the currencies as top to bottom. We want to have some side by side. So we'll choose three as a number. So I want number of columns to be three. But hey, I want to have this one. Uh, then further, from where should I pick up the data? So data is going to be picked up from uh, currency by rupee. In case you forgot that, let me just remind you, this is our currency by rupee, which is coming up from the constants. So automatically, we are fetching it uh, array and it will automatically uh, does the magic for us, optimizing the things. All right. Uh, further then, then it needs a key extractor. This is most important. Without this, the performance is not going to come in. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do in this one. So every item is there automatically and this item will be uh, taken item dot name. Now what is happening here? Automatically, this data is referring to an array. And when you provide a key extractor, it automatically knows that I have an array and I'll access the each item of that array. So it takes the data from this data variable up here or the prop you can say. And from this item dot name, in this case, our name is unique for every currency. That's why I'm choosing it. Otherwise, you can choose ID if you are uh, fetching from database or anything like that. Super simple, no complex. All right. One more thing that is absolutely 100% required is the render item. This is most confusing to people, but don't get confused. Super, super easy to understand. It is the element that you want to loop. Uh, you want to print on the screen. It can be a pile like we want to have just a long tile and can be followed by a scroll long list. It can be one card item as well, maybe a shopping list or card something. So it is that is nothing much more. You can have a simple text element here as well, which is keep on iterating. That's it. Super simple. All right. The way how you write it is really simple. You have this one. So in this first and foremost, we go ahead and work like this. So we want to go and use it like this. And there we go. This is the most important part. A lot of people just write, try to write it like this. This is not a correct thing. You have to use a return keyword in this one. We don't want to do this. So we'll go like this. All right. Oops, there we go. We'll go like this. There we go. Now in this further, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a destructuring. We don't want exactly all this. So we'll just call this one as item. This is how you have to do it. In the render item, uh, each item is going to be destructured as well. Now further down the road, what I'll do is I'll just first have a pressable. Pressable, why? Because with the pressable only, I can have an action on which I can run some of my code. So I'll just say, hey, I want to have this pressable. Once I have this pressable, so let's go ahead and uh, close it like this. There we go. Inside the pressable, I'll have something, but not right now. First of all, I want to uh, focus on what should happen when something is being pressed. First, let's give it a style. So there we go. We'll go style like this. It will be an array of styles. Multiple styles will keep on coming up here. 
So first is styles dot button. That is my first style that I want to have. And then we'll actually uh, fluctuate some of the styling based on that. So I'll just put up a comma here, hit an enter just like this. I think I should move it on to oops, like this onto a next line, much more easier to understand. All right. Further down the road, we'll have a simple target currency and that target currency will be equals to item dot name and we'll simply have styles dot selected. All right. So come on, not like this. M person. So basically we are conditionally rendering some styles that, hey, if this item is selected, we want to show it a little bit different. If it is not selected, then we want to show it a little bit different. All right. So we'll sh I'll show you what this, nothing much. This is a basic styling, whatever is selected or whatever is not. The most important part about this is on pressable is uh, something known as on press. There we go. Now what should happen on press? Obviously I'll use this one here and I'll say that, hey, whenever the button is pressed, use this button pressed. And with this, I'll provide an item. If you remember the way how we wrote the code of this button pressed just up here. And here we go, button pressed, we actually extract uh, this target value here. So all the items are being passed on, which are of data type of currency. So we can extract all the values from it. Really simple, nothing much complex that we are doing. All right. So once we have this pressable, uh, there is nothing much more. Now, what we have to do further down the road is uh, let's go here inside the pressable. Now I'm inside the pressable. So whatever you want to iterate, you can just put it up here. It can be a simple text. It can be simply a number. In this case, we have designed a custom component for it, which is currency button. So let's go ahead and import this. So we'll say that, hey, currency button comes up here and we are going to close like this. Now, it's not going to be just one thing that we want to pass on. So we have to use some of the JavaScript magic here. We'll simply say dot, dot, dot and item. So we are just spreading it out and passing it up on there. All right, there we go. Save this and this should be it, all that we wanted to do. Now we are seeing nothing on this. So probably we need to start it again. Uh, let me just see where my terminal is. There we go. Probably we need to close this, terminate. And let's start this again. Uh, probably I mean, might need to pause the video a little bit if it doesn't load it properly. And it will take just a few seconds to build it. All right. Just taking a tiny bit more. Uh, let me check why it is not loading up properly. All right, so figured it out why it was not working. Just a small minor error that was there. Not error, but it was a conflict. I don't edit out these pieces of the videos because it's very important to see uh, for the students as well that how I debugged it or it doesn't work on the first time it actually takes. This is how the real softwares are actually built. So first thing that I did is I tried that whether I'm having some mistake in this app, but turns out no, <laughs> that was unnecessary me. It was a function I converted into arrow function. No use, <laughs> no use at, at all and you'll be doing it. Then I tried to remove the safe area because there was no point of having a safe area because uh, we're taking care of things in the list view itself. So I just removed it uh, from here and from here it is. Uh, don't remove this one as well because we need to wrap everything. This is JSX, of course, I saved it. And the moment I saved it, it actually works nicely and fine. Uh, other thing that we can do is actually we can have a better background color or something like that in case you wish or you want to have, you can actually go ahead and use this. Now, the point is that some of our input elements are a little bit outside of this one as well. So I noticed here it says all of this. But yeah, it's it's not. So what we need to do is we need to have a background color, which is a little bit different. So we'll be going with uh, D1, 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 a color that I happen to remember. Uh, no, probably a little bit more darker. So let's try 515151. Save that. Yeah, this is better. I happen to remember a few of the colors. So we need to enter some amount in rupees. Uh, let's just say we want to go for 500 rupees. How much 500 rupees cost in dollar? When I click on this, uh, again, our content is there, but it's actually not really the best of the, so we need to tweak out the result. Uh, this is all uh, black. This should be visible to us. Uh, there we go. And also now you see that the dollar is actually being selected. Uh, that's why this color is highlighted and that's exactly what we did. This is the conditional rendering of the styling that we saw that you can see here. 
that in the target currency, when the item name is there, then the style is selected, otherwise it is not. So this is exactly what we're doing. Let's see how much 500 rupees is in euro. So let's select that. And this is the euro. Uh, this is the pound. So app happens to be working currently fine. And this is exactly how you work on with the style, uh, this uh, flat list actually. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually change the layout pretty easily. You can go ahead and select a two for here. And as soon as you select two, uh, then probably the num columns uh, on the fly is not supported. <laughs> uh, change the key prop on the flat list when changing the number to force a fresh render. Uh, I'll not. I'll in fact do a fresh render just like this. So I'll just dismiss this. Let's do a refresh. Shift refresh. Uh, no, I had to restart the app on the fly. This is not. This is the first time even I'm seeing this. So let's go back three. Save. Yeah, this is one. Uh, but what you can do and I would recommend you to do so is change the styling in such a way that these are not in the three, just try to have a one big pile, uh, or you can say a pill, pile, whatever you say that, <laughs> a big pill as simple one, and try to add more currency so that you can see the power of flat list and can see how it scroll. Once you actually build that, share your experience on Hashnode that how you were able to actually work a little bit on top of the app that somebody is teaching you on YouTube. And that would be a great exercise for you. Interviewers are usually very well impressed that you have not just copied the app from somebody, you have actually worked a little bit more on, onto it so that you actually had a learning experience. So do that and share this with me on Hashnode. I would really love to read your article on that. Uh, that's all for this one. Uh, if you have any suggestions or any comment or if you want any app, let me know in the comment section. I would happily do it for you. That's all for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.